Today I want to share with you organization throughout our house. So I'm standing at our front door because I figured that would be the best place to start. We don't have any kind of mudroom or entry. This is it. So this is our front door. This is the one that we come in and out of. So this is our landing station. So over here we have our key rack and we hang up all of our keys. So as we walk in the door, we hang the keys right up. We also have masks here right now because masks. If we have any mail that needs to go out, it can go in here. I keep motion sickness pills right here in case we are going on a long trip. And then over here, we hang our coats. So this is mostly just Brian and I and visitors. The kids have hooks in their own rooms for their coats and backpacks and all of their stuff. Today I have a bag of Taekwondo supplies because the kids have Taekwondo later and they're gonna need to remember to take this with them. So I have that hanging up. The rest of the week I have it hidden away so I don't have to look at it all the time. This is where I hang up my purse, my coat, scarf, everything for this season. Because we have such limited storage in our house when we switch seasons, then I take all the winter coats and I hang them in our bedroom closet and I bring our summer jackets out and they stay here. I have found that hooks work so much better for organizing with a family because the kids are not likely to pull out a hanger, hang their coat up and put the hanger back in the closet. So I've put hooks in the room. We have hooks on one side of the room for Titus and all of the snow gear that we have throughout the winter. And then Paul has a couple hooks on his side of the bedroom for his backpack and his coat. And then Naomi has hooks in her room to store her jackets and backpack and all of that. This video is made in collaboration with a whole group of YouTubers for Mega March Motivation, hosted by Dawn, the Minimal Mom. So if you're ready to get your home organized, there's a whole group of us sharing our organizational tips and tricks on the playlist this week, and I'll put that in the video description below. Moving over in the living room, we have our one cabinet. This is the only cabinet we have in our living room to store our things. And these bins just have extra electrical stuff. So um, you can see like it doesn't quite all fit inside the basket, but this is a microphone and another tripod for my phone um, and different stuff that we need, plus Brian's chain mail. So down here we have our movies. These are our collector edition Lord of the Rings because we're big Lord of the Rings fans. And then the other movies are either like sets or they're ones that we haven't decided that we absolutely want to keep. And when we decide we absolutely want to keep them, we put them in a CD wallet. So the kids have a CD wallet, we have a family one, and then we have a couple for Brian and his movie collections. The CDs used to take up so many more shelves here. So when we moved to a CD wallet, it really reduced all the room that it took up and you can recycle the CD containers. So CDs. So I would only recommend keeping the DVDs that you absolutely watch over and over again. If there's some that you're not sure about when was the last time you watched it or when you would ever want to watch it again, then it's not worth taking up space in our cabinets or our house. One of the things that I found so helpful in keeping the living room organized and tidy is to limit what's stored in the living room to only communal things. So if we have all the equipment for our devices in the living room, it makes sense because the devices are communal. If we have all of our DVDs and videos stored in the living room, that makes sense because we all use them. But we don't store personal items in the living room. So if someone has a lot of books or a lot of musical instruments or toys, things like that are not stored in the living room. They have designated places elsewhere. Keeping all of those things, all the personal items out of the living room means it's really easy to tidy up when I do need to tidy. So on this wall of our dining room, we handle the kids' artwork. So if they bring things home from school that they want to display or they draw, paint something that they want to display, this is where it's displayed. These are hinged frames and they hold about 50 pieces of paper. So when it gets full, we empty it out with the kids, we sort through it, and I take a picture of the child with all their artwork before we throw their artwork away. Then they just hold on to their most special pieces in these frames. 
this has helped so much with all of the kid paper clutter throughout the house because I'm not displaying it on the piano or on the refrigerator. It's not getting shuffled from counter to counter. If they want to display something, it goes in here. And if it doesn't mean that much to them, then it just goes right into the recycling or the trash. The other part of our dining room, I have my filing cabinet that I got at Ikea quite a few years ago. And I found that if things are in drawers, I will put them away. It's so much easier to slip a piece of paper into a drawer than look for the right file and drop it in. For whatever reason, that's just the way I am. So when I have things that I need to keep or file, I have a designated drawer for each of these. And I do have a more detailed video that I will link in the video description if you want to find out how I handle all my paper clutter. But in one of these drawers is our inbox. So if there's any kind of bills that come in, things that need to be dealt with, it goes in this drawer and then my husband takes care of all paying all the bills once a week and he knows exactly where to look for the papers that he needs. All right, moving on to the kitchen. Because we have a large family, we have six kids, three have moved out, but I've still used the same way to organize glasses because it helped so much in just curbing the amount of dishes that we had to wash on a daily basis. So every person has their own special cup. So for the younger kids, I took them down to the thrift store and they picked out their own glasses and I keep them right up front so it's easy for them to reach. And then quite a few years ago, I found these cups with different colored tops and so each person in the family has a different color assigned to them and this is just what they use every time they get a glass so the older boys when they come home for for dinner or visiting whatever they will still pick up their specific color and leave it sitting on the counter so throughout the day they use the same cup all day long and then we'll wash all the glasses at night when we wash up the dinner dishes this means that they're only dirtying one glass every day. So even with six or eight of us drinking out of a glass, we only have to use that one glass all day long, and then we can wash it with the dishes in the evening. So this is a spice drawer in my kitchen. I found having my spices in a drawer is so much easier than having them in a cupboard somewhere or stored in the pantry. So this is right next to my stove, and I can just reach in and grab the spices that I want. These are the Costco spices and it happens to fit in this deep drawer. And then back here, I just have an old shoe box for the smaller spices that are difficult to organize. The nice thing about this is if you need to have the spices labeled, you can write it just on the top and then you can look down and see exactly what you have. When you're working on your kitchen, figuring out how to organize your kitchen, it's really helpful to have zones or stations for what you're doing. So this is my main work area right here on this counter and over here on this counter by the stove. On this counter I do a lot of my prep work and baking. So I have my cutting boards right here and then right behind me I have all my sharp knives. I have my most used mixing bowls and also my measuring spoons and cups and immersion blender right here. In my trunk I keep all of my flour, sugar, that kind of stuff. And then because our kitchen is smaller, I and I want to have my baking essentials that are ones that I use all the time for making pancakes in the morning, I keep them right back here behind our utensils. So I have salt, baking powder, baking soda, cornstarch, and sugar. Having it all right here so as I'm baking, if I just set it out and I can just turn and grab what I need, open the drawer, grab what I need, it means I don't have to wander around the kitchen very often trying to find all my supplies. It's all right here within about a step. As far as the laundry area goes, the less we have, the easier it is to keep clean. I just put screws or nails into the walls so I could hang up the different things that can be hung up and then they're easy to grab. When we talk about laundry and the messes that come with it, I will say that I do not have a missing sock box. I used to and it would sit for years and nobody would ever retrieve any socks out of it. And now all the kids wear mismatched socks anyway, so it doesn't matter. And I don't store hand-me-downs for kids' clothes. I used to. I used to get a whole bunch of hand-me-downs. I'd stick them in the basement, 
and I would forget what sizes we had. And, and when the kids needed new clothes, I would go to the store and buy them what they needed. And it was years later that I'd be cleaning out the basement and I'd see these clothes that we could have used a couple years ago. So I like to recommend that people use the secondhand shops. Let them store all the clothes for you. And when you need new clothes, trade them in and use the credit to get the next size that you need. For people who are really minimalist, it does work to have boxes of clothes labeled with sizes up in the kids' closets. But if it's something that you're struggling with and you're overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that you have, then trying to have a system to organize it, it just makes our life more complicated. And we're requiring so much of ourselves. So my method is to keep it as easy for me as possible. And if that means the secondhand store stores, all of my stuff until I need the next size, then that's great. When our older boys were growing up, they were just stair steps. They were just a year apart. When one would move out of a size, the next one would move into it. So one of the tricks that I found that was super helpful in keeping track of whose was whose was to use the dot system. One dot for the oldest child, two dots for the second child, three dots for the third child. This way, anybody who is folding the clothes can easily tell on the tag which person this item belongs to. Here we are in the bathroom. Color coding has made my life so much easier. So we have it in every area we can. When we get water bottles, when we have glasses, when we get towels. So every person in the family has their assigned color. So it doesn't matter where it's hung up, they know which towel is theirs and they can grab it. This also means less laundry. So we leave our towels hanging and it's Montana, it's really dry. So you take a shower in the morning, the towel is going to be dry by evening. And then I can wash the towels once a week on Saturday when we do our weekly reset. Doing it this way means that we only have to have one towel per person and then a couple of spares for visitors. So the towels don't have to take up a lot of space in our cupboard. Also in our bathroom, because our bathroom is so tiny, so I keep all of our medications, like pain relievers, that type of stuff, in just a fabric bin up top. This is actually a very deep shelf, so in the back I can store all of those unsightly things that we do use, like hydrogen peroxide, rubbing alcohol, things that we need from time to time, but I just don't wanna look at, so I can keep those back there out of sight. This little basket is for hand towels, and then I have another fabric bin back here that we store the extra sheets and pillowcases. Having these baskets and bins makes it nicer because we don't have to look at it. And if somebody wants something, it's very easy to say, well, well, if you need ibuprofen, it's gonna be in the bin. I like to have it this size so it takes up the whole visual space, but it's actually not very full. And for fun, our family owns a couple of plastic Spider-Mans that we randomly hide throughout the house. And you can see this last one that I hid is right back here. The kids have not spotted it. So just one of those fun games that we do. Our oldest son who lives in Virginia visited us in November and he hid a Spider-Man and the kids have not found it yet. But I'm not going to reveal where that one's at on the video just in case one of the kids happened to watch this. My biggest reason for embracing minimalism is because I'm not naturally a tidy person. I understood organizational systems in the sense that, yes, I need all the glasses next to the place where I get all of my drinks and I need my baking supplies next to the place that I bake. But just because I knew that didn't mean that my house stayed clean all the time because all of those places were crammed full of items. And if I wanted to put something away, it might not always fit. So to solve the majority of my issues of keeping a clean house, keeping it nice and organized, putting things away after I'm done using them, I had to make it easy for myself. And that meant to get rid of the majority of my stuff. I'm not one of those people that is going to keep things organized if there's a lot of it. If it takes time, I'm not likely to do it. So I have to make it stupid easy for myself. I have to make it so easy that it doesn't even make sense if I don't follow through. So if you're struggling to organize any particular area in your house, remember that if you get rid of the majority of the stuff there, it's going to be so much easier to organize. And it's going to be easy to keep it organized especially when we have family involved. If we want our family to participate in putting things away, we need to make the system easy for them as well. And we need it to be clear. 
We don't want to have spices stored in three different areas of the kitchen, of some in the pantry, some in the cupboard, and some in the drawer. <laughs> then when somebody is cooking and they have the spices out, they're not likely to remember which place it belonged in. And if they don't remember, they're just going to leave it on the counter. So if we have a designated space for the spices, they will know the spices go in this designated space. That makes it easy for them. If we have a shelf for the coffee cups and a shelf for glasses, then when they're putting the dishes away from the dishwasher, they know exactly which shelf those items belong in. But if we have our dishes and our cups and our glasses all randomly shoved into one cupboard, then they might not even want to put the dishes away because, ah, is it even going to fit? Maybe it'd just be easier if I leave them, you know, sitting in the dish rack or in the dishwasher. Yeah, and we can use them out of that. So that's it for me today. Be sure to check out the playlist with all the other YouTubers talking about their organizational systems throughout their home. I'll link it in the video description below. If you want to learn more about our family and how we function as minimalists, you can check out our vlog videos right here. And next week, I'm going to be sharing my success formula for decluttering. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.